Well today should be very interesting. I'm heading to the Murray Coast to host a weekend's worth of photography workshops and today I'm meeting clients in Fintorn. And at the moment the weather forecast is looking very, very variable. Today we've got up to 50 mile an hour winds with sunshine and showers. Not just rain showers but also hail showers. And I mean, this is quite exciting, to be fair. This is quite exciting. The changeable, stormy, unpredictable weather often leads to the best photographs because the the wind of, you know, it makes the waves crash, it makes the sand move. You're, the scene in front of you is forever changing. Also, because of the wind, the clouds are moving fast, the light changes every single minute. You've got to be in the right spot at the right time to get the... the good photograph with the best light, but because the, ch the conditions change so frequently, the opportunities for photographic images and for getting your creativity running wild are in many ways endless. So long as you can put up with the gale force winds and getting battered every 10 to 15 minutes with rain. So today's going to be a challenge and I'm, I'm really excited for that challenge and hopefully myself and my clients will go home with some interesting images even if we're likely to be soaked to the skin at the end of it all. Let the weekend of photography workshops begin and I'm going to speak you through what happens, what images I get and how well everything goes. This could be an exciting one. There's nothing better than going back to the coastline that you were brought up in to do photography workshops, to the place that you know probably the best that you've done the most photography in your life and to share that experience and that knowledge with other people. I've arrived in Fintorn, <laughs> safe and sound, thankfully. And the weather's just as variable and as wet as the forecast had predicted. So for once the forecast is right. It's a little bit more wet than clear just now. So I'm sort of, I'm hoping there's two hours, two hours until the workshop begins. So I'm really hoping that some of the clear skies are gonna, gonna move to, to over the sea and the beach and we'll be greeted with some nice light. But these passing showers are creating so much surface water, so much drama. Providing we can deal with the rain and and all of, and the wind that, that's happening here just now, we're going to be in for a great shoot. In the distance, there is some nice bits in the clouds opening up, but it just looks so bleak when the rain is battering down and the wind's howling against my car. Anyway, I'm going to go and have something to eat and just get myself ready for this workshop, and I'll be able to film some clips and that when the workshop begins. Check in with you all again soon and show you what's going to happen this afternoon. <laughs> I actually wish that my workshop was happening right now. Look at that dark foreboding sky and the sunlight, if it will focus, hitting the landscape. I've just seen a rainbow too. I, I, if these conditions continue until sunset, this is going to be a phenomenal workshop. Oh, I'm so excited for this. So excited. The elements are challenging, but they will be rewarding and I can't wait to see what images we're going to get. This, days like today, is the best days for landscape photography. You don't know what's going to happen, but often the light changes so quickly that the photographic opportunities change and present themselves to you constantly. Every 5-10 minutes the light looks different, every 5-10 minutes you're up against a new challenge, a new direction to shoot. Only an hour and 40 minutes to go. The countdown is well and truly on. I'm just so excited for this, so excited. This is an epic afternoon. We've been photographing the sand swirling around in the wind, which I've never really seen at Fintorn before. It's getting some really unique images. I'm now coming down to one of the only bouldery wooden bits that's left here. We're getting some beautiful, beautiful light. This, uh, we're not getting the, the beautiful striking light that I was hoping for, but there's so much to work from this afternoon. And this is a fantastic day to get out with your camera and just embrace it. What 
an evening. That was a thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyable workshop full of lovely participants. We had a great time and learnt so much from each other. We got on so well that a couple of us have even just been to the local pub for a drink. It was, oh, what a great way to spend a Friday night. Huge thank you to the three people who attended. It means the world to me and I've just had such a great night. I didn't do much vlogging, if any really, while I was out today because at the end of the day my focus is on my clients and chatting to them and teaching them stuff and us learning from each other. But just like my pen and video I took plenty of b-roll shots and took plenty of photos so I'm gonna sit down tomorrow, edit them all and talk you through what happened. And it's now miraculously the next day. <laughs> Last night was great. We had a great shoot. We got loads of images and although we didn't, weren't treated with a beautiful sunset, we still got some images that I think all the participants are happy with. As I say, it's now the next day. I've actually been up for the past two hours. I've just got back from a sunrise shoot, also here in Fintorn. Although we didn't get a sunrise, but I managed to still get one image and I spoke you through something very thought provoking when it comes to landscape photography. So if you want to find out what that thought provoking thing is, tune in next time and you will find out. While I'm sitting here having my very healthy breakfast of oats with milk mixed with mango and passion fruit yogurt, chia seeds and bee pollen, I've no idea. I saw it in the supermarket and was honed into it with the idea of eating bees pollen and having protein in cereal. But regardless of whether it's healthy or not, I'm going to sit down and have a look through my photographs that I took last night and once I've edited them I'm going to discuss what I think of them, why I think they work or why I think they don't work and discuss how last night went in general photography wise because I learned a lot from last night's experience and as I say we never got a sunset so we had to work with what we were given but I am excited to have a look at these images and share them with you all. I'll speak to you all once I'm finished. You can probably tell that it's no longer the morning and you'll be wondering what happened to me sitting down and talking you through the images and which ones I captured and what happened last night during the workshop. Well, have you ever been in a situation where you've plugged in your memory card and you've uploaded your images onto Lightroom or whatever editing software you use and you've been instantly disappointed? That was how I felt this morning, but I knew that the images had potential. I think it's just because I'd been up since five o'clock. I'd already been out filming another video, which you'll see probably this coming Thursday or Sunday. I was starving, I just had a shower. I was just, my mind was all over the place and I had a busy day ahead of me. And I didn't feel like I was able to sit down and concentrate like I wanted to. So when I got back in the afternoon, I sat down and started editing the images and I managed to create some images that I am reasonably happy with. There was a few images that weren't very good compositionally, but I sort of knew that was gonna be the case in the field. But it's really good to have edited them now and be happy with some of the images. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna divide the images that I took last night into categories because we've got some images showcasing the dark foreboding sky, we've got some long exposure images showing solitude, and we've also got some black and white images showing the sand blowing. And I'm gonna talk you through why I like these images, why I've edited them the way I have, and hopefully you can get a feel of how last night went and how myself and my participants were able to adapt to the fact that we never really got a sunset, but just still get some images that we can be happy with. The first batch of images I'm going to show you is a selection of photographs that I took of some wooden beams that were sticking out on the beach. Now if you watch my next video I speak about how the landscape here in Fintorn has changed through the years and why you need to utilise your landscape images and make the most of the situation that you find yourself in because things change constantly in the landscape. I think I said earlier in this video that I wasn't going to tell you what next video is about, but I 
I've just told you. And, but the thing is, last night what was great was there was, like I say, these, these wooden planks of wood and it was really windy so we had some of the dry sand blowing across the beach like you would have seen in my last episode at Rattray Head but it was blowing right in the middle of these wooden pillars. It was making some really nice oval shapes at the bottom of these wooden pillars and also causing these really nice lines going off to the right hand side of the image. It didn't look great in colour purely because it was quite flat light. There's one image that I liked in colour which is this one but even that comparing it to the black and white images isn't great but because you have this focal point in this image or these images of the the wooden planks and, and the sand going around it, it works or they work fantastically in black and white. And black and white is a genre of photography that I don't do very often and it's also a genre that I don't enjoy as much as other genres purely because I like to show the colour of the landscape and show really nice vibrant images but I personally am trying to get better of making the most of my conditions and shooting in all weather conditions and black and white works very good in the light that we had that evening and it's showing I suppose how again you don't need amazing light to get good landscape images sometimes you've just got to look down at your feet and make the most of the light and the conditions that present themselves to you <laughs> The next batch of images were quite simple in many ways and some people might think that these images are slightly messy but what these images are is a, a batch of portrait images and there was a point during the workshop where the sun came through the clouds and some of the darker clouds in the distance were really illuminated by the fact that the sun had come through the clouds and what I did was I focused on the marum grass which was up in the sand dunes because the colour of yellow that is shown when the sun hits the marum grass can add so much contrast to your images and I took quite a few images of this sort of setting. None of them are particularly my favourite images from the night, but what it does is it showcases how when you get these amazing bursts of light, just trying to focus on certain parts of the landscape that is lit up by the light, and um, which is really, really comes alive when the light hits it, it can just add a more 3D and a more like I say, contrasting image, but it's a natural contrast and not an edited contrast, which makes it pop so much more and makes it realistic because that is what it looks like in real life. Another image I took, which many people may think is a bit messy, but I personally like this because I feel it tells a story. We were obviously walking around the beach doing our photography and other people were on the beach as well. And it's really difficult during the day to get images without footprints in them, but I decided to take an image deliberately with footprints coming towards the camera and what I feel it does is it shows a story of somebody walking into the distance of the beach which you can't see what's in the distance and what this person has walked from which means that your imagination can run wild and you can start to think about what sort of place this image was taken because without if I just post this online and not put which beach or wherever it was taken you wouldn't really know and like I say it allows your creative mind and your imagination to run wild and it's just a little bit of a sort of abstract fine art image and again you've got some of the of the sand blowing across it just adding some contrast and some highlights to the image too it's just something Again, I'm trying to get quite creative with my images and I did take another one which I'll put up now where you can see where the footprints are going and I do like this image as well but not as much as the last one because the last one as I say you can't really tell where I am and it allows your imagination to run wild. Something I really tried to focus on that evening was there was this beautiful dark strip of clouds above the, the sea and the horizon and I experimented with a couple of different exposures. I tried long exposure but I also tried quite quick shutter speeds and this image here is probably one of my favourite images that I took of the night because it showcases the fact that there wasn't much light 
but you had these dark foreboding clouds and because it's quite a moody and quite a, a blue image it also showcases how freezing it was when we were on the beach because it was so so cold and another thing I like about this image is the fact that because you have the classic Fintorn cross you can tell where I am location wise which works in this image. The last image it worked more not to know where I was because I feel like I say it was more of an imaginative image whereas this one is showing the sheer force and scale of the weather in an iconic location and it just shows these photographs were pretty much taken side by side one of them pointing at the ground and one of them pointing on the horizon but yet just being in one position in one location you can get two completely different images just by looking around you and changing your composition this is the same image but taken as a long exposure and as you can see it's got a completely different feel to it. It's got more of a relaxed feel to it. You can see more of the sand moving along the beach but the clouds on that, that atmosphere that was in the other one isn't so obvious. But I was doing this to showcase to some of my clients how having a filter can change your image and give it a different feel and this is I feel a very good example of that. I do like both of the images but I do feel like the first one I like slightly better just because it's it's more dramatic and showcases more of what the conditions were really like that night. Another thing I experimented with was this cloud that I was on about a minute ago also stretched along the coastline towards the village of Berghead and I tried to get some longish exposures of the waves coming in, getting some of that ripple effect. I wasn't really very happy with these images. I did some long exposure ones as well over about five to six seconds and they're okay but the composition's not great and I did adjust my composition many times to try and get a slight different take on this this location and this image but I don't know one or two of them I think is okay but I just feel like I don't feel these are as good as the other ones but again I was trying to showcase the fact that it was freezing there wasn't much light but we had this beautiful dramatic cloud on the horizon and also to show as I say my location it's just another way that you can experiment with things when the lighting conditions aren't great Although there is one image that I took, what I did was I, I basically faced the opposite direction to the, the wooden thing that I was photographing and the sun was beginning to set and we did get a very quick sort of burst of light underneath one of the big clouds which was very atmospheric and that can be showcased here in this image. And this is an image that I really like for many reasons. I just, I love being out shooting when there's dramatic light and when there's quick changes in light because although there, there wasn't as much changes during the, the, the workshop as there had been earlier in the day, it was still was enough to allow for really diverse images and, and to show that atmosphere and that location. This is another image I took, which is sort of similar, but was slightly further up the beach. And I've already mentioned the fact that, that it was windy and blowing all this sand. And this image, I tried to capture that. So we've got the sand blowing towards me, causing leading lines and showing the force of the wind and the nature that day. And I wasn't sure about this image when I first looked at it, but now that I've edited it slightly and I'm showcasing the clouds a little more dramatic, because um, they were quite bright in my image because I didn't use a neutral density filter because I haven't got a hard edge neutral density filter because I, I broke mine a few years ago and I can't afford to replace them but I managed to, to reignite this image in post-processing which I'm really, really happy with. So that was just a rundown of some of the images that I took during last night's workshop and I've spoken you through roughly what my thought processes were when I was shooting these images I've only had two workshops so far but both of them I've learned a great deal from and it's been so good to, to teach people what I know but also learn from other people as well and I would like to really know whether you, you like these videos of me sitting down and discussing the images I take because when I'm out doing my workshops I take a lot of images because I want my clients to learn from my images as well as the images that they are taking but I also feel like I take a lot more images during my workshops than I do in my average videos and I don't just want to post them on social media and not talk about them because 
As I say, I'm learning a lot from this process and I feel like it's only right to share a lot of the knowledge that I'm learning and a lot of the knowledge that I'm instilling into other people during these workshops on here. What I'm showcasing in these videos is a very small snippet of the workshop, a small snippet of the photographs that I took. It's not the full story, but it's giving you an idea of what happens and how we interpreted the light and how you can try and interpret different or similar situations in your photographic journeys. But really, the learning happens out in the field and happens when you go home and edit your own images. But I just thought it would be nice to sit you down and discuss these. So if you like this video and the one that I did the other week on my about my workshop in Pennon, do let me know and let me know if you're learning anything from them and if it's something you'd like me to continue doing. As always, I want to say a huge thank you for watching. In the next month, I've already mentioned in a recent video, I'm going to Sky. I've also got some really exciting things planned in terms of trips and showing you some more parts of Scotland, which I haven't showcased on this channel yet, and just enjoying them. And going back to some of the locations that I have shot at recently and said I'm going to shoot at again, but not got round to yet. There's quite a lot of good outdoorsy exploring and photography trips coming your way in the next month or so. So stay tuned for that and I'll hopefully see you all again next time. Wow, if I can do this full time and meet so many amazing people, I want to do this for the rest of my life because this is incredible. Spending like three and a half hours out in the field shooting with great people that have got loads to tell you, loads to teach you, then going to the pub for a drink afterwards and just chatting about life and about Scotland and learning about each other, it's great fun.